Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build this outdoor bar. And you wanna know what's even better? I'm gonna show you how to do it without having to own all the tools. What's up everyone, I'm Mike with woodshopmike.com and today we're gonna build this outdoor bar. Now this project blends a handful of materials and techniques to create a bar that looks great, has tons of storage, and will stand up to the outdoor elements. So, let's get to the build. After purchasing my supplies online, I headed to my local Home Depot for curbside pickup. Once I arrived at the store, the process was very easy. I opened the Home Depot mobile app and let the store know I had arrived and was ready to pick up my order. It was great to have everything brought out to the truck, ready to load so I could get back to the shop and start building quickly. The first thing I do is start breaking down the 3 quarter millimeter to make my form for the concrete countertop. Here I'm laminating two pieces of 3 quarter inch melamine. This creates a void in my mold and forms the 3 inch drop edge around the countertop's perimeter. With the sheets laminated, I cut both ends square into final length using my Craig track saw. To keep the melamine from swelling from the moisture in the concrete, I used clear plastic packing tape to wrap the edges. You could also seal the surface with caulk if you preferred, but I think I've seen this before in another video and I wanted to give it a try. Next up, I attach the bottom of the mold, and I use a square to quickly draw some reference lines for my screw locations. Hey guys, just to let y'all know, if you are interested in building this bar for yourself or your friends, make sure to grab the plans that are linked below and above in the card. With the sides attached, I remove all the dust and wipe down the form with denatured alcohol. Now I run a bead of pure silicone caulk along all of the inside corners. This prevents moisture from getting into the particle board core of the melamine, which could swell and possibly distort the countertop. To add some additional strength to the countertop, I now cut remesh two inches smaller than the overall dimensions of the inside of the form. To make mixing and coloring the concrete countertop easier, I opted to use the Home Depot's tool rental program and I grabbed an electric mixer for the day, which made the project so much easier than using a five gallon bucket and a handheld mixer. The Home Depot has rental centers at most of their stores across the country and the process is very streamlined to get you back to your project quickly. They also rent trucks so if the material or tour rentals you need for your project won't fit in your vehicle, you can rent a truck and tackle your next project. With the form halfway filled, I put the remesh in place and then poured the rest of the concrete on top of the remesh. Then I used a scrap piece of wood to screed the surface. After the surface was screeded, I needed to vibrate the form. I ended up using my multi-tool, but the attachment that I have ended up breaking, so we'll talk about that more here in a little bit. After the form is vibrated, you use a magnesium float to float the surface. I also went back and used a steel trowel, and what that does is it smooths out the surface a little bit more. All right, on to building the base for the bar. For this I went with cedar, and this is a great choice for outdoor projects because it's naturally rot resistant. I start off by gang cutting the pieces at the miter saw that will make up the frame, and then after that I move on to the joiner. Now the purpose of the joiner is to give me two perpendicular surfaces on each board. After I'm done with all the joining operations, I then move on to the planer and I bring the boards down to their final dimensions.
I want to let you guys know this project was sponsored by my friends over at the Home Depot. From versatile buying options, tool rentals, and thousands of how-to videos, the Home Depot has the tools and materials you need to keep building and to get more done. For other elements of the outdoor bar, I'm using cedar 2x4s. Now these have already been jointed and planed, and so here on the table saw I'm just cutting them to their final width. Okay, so now we're getting into a little bit of joinery, and as you see, we're going with pocket hole screws. Now for this project, I opted to go with the heavy duty pocket hole screws because of the additional strength that they offer. And what's nice is that these screws are already coated, so they are suitable for outdoor purposes. To make getting the half inch inset a little bit easier for these long cross members, I ended up using some half inch MDF scraps to set them on. And once everything was screwed into place, I then used a tape measure across both corners to check the frame for square. With the front and back frames assembled, it's now time to bring that all together with some shorter cross members. And here again, we're using the heavy duty Craig pocket hole screws. Now at the miter saw, I'm batch cutting some slats that'll make up the bottom shelf for this bar. Here I'm using a slat as the depth gauge to set the exact location of this 2x2 support rail that's going to support all the slats to make that bottom shelf. The spacing that I'm aiming for with these slats is about 3 16 of an inch, and I have two rulers in the shop that I tape together that hits that almost exactly. So after I mark the center of the bar on the front and back, I install my first slat. And with that one installed, I then use my double ruler spacer to install all the slats to the right, and then I start uh, back at the middle and install all the slats to the left. Here I'm using one and a quarter 16 gauge nails to attach all of those slats. I opted to cut these corrugated roofing panels outside because they were already out there from doing the patinaing process. And if you're interested in hearing more about that, make sure to watch the video that I have linked above where I cover how to patina new galvanized metal with products that you probably already have at home. With all the panels cut to size, I'm now attaching them to the frame and I'm using Craig's one and a quarter inch blue coat pocket hole screws. Now that all the corrugated metal is installed, I can start putting in the framing for the shelf that's going to sit on the left hand side of this bar. With all of the vertical pieces attached, I'm now cutting notches in the horizontal pieces that the slats will then sit on top of. So here you see I'm using those same trim screws to attach this horizontal piece, but I opted to actually go back with the Craig heavy duty pocket hole screws because they have substantially more holding power. Once I verify that these two pieces are level, it's time to run in the last two screws and then cut all those slats for this shelf. So here I am back again using my double ruler spacer and some one and a quarter inch 16 gauge brad nails to secure all the slats for this shelf. Now here at the end I had to do a little bit of notching so I ran over to the bandsaw real quick, cut that to size and then nailed it in place. To secure the bottom edge of these corrugated panels, I used some construction adhesive, cedar strips, and some 16 gauge nails to hold everything in place. I let the concrete cure in the mold for a couple of days before breaking the mold apart. And here, as you see, I'm just unscrewing it and then I'm using a five in one or a pry bar to knock these pieces away. So if you remember, I was not able to vibrate the mold as much as I wanted to, and that's important because it gets air bubbles out of the concrete mixture, which is what causes all of those tiny bug holes or voids that you see. So the next time I'll either use a large hammer or a sawzall without the blade in it to vibrate the mold and get all those air bubbles out. As is not a big deal, after I sanded down the surface and edges, I mixed up a concrete patch and tinted it about the same. It came out pretty darn close. And then I just applied that patch to the face of the slab. 
One important thing I didn't do in this first section, but you want to spritz the surface with water before you apply that patch, and it just helps with adhesion. After the patch was fully cured, I went back and I sanded everything smooth so that way I have a very consistent surface around the bar. And then after several more days, I applied a low luster sealer uh, just to bring a little bit of depth to the concrete countertop. And I didn't show it in this video, but the way that I attached the concrete countertop to the base of the bar is with Gorilla Glue construction adhesive. All right, everyone, make sure to grab those plans that are linked below. If you want to build a bar like this for yourself or your friends, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to let me know in the comment section as well. I hope you enjoyed the build. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, you're still there. Awesome. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, I got another one queued up for you right here. And if you want other awesome content from me, check out those. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe. And until next time, have fun making something.